Hey Danish Camp family! We are going to be making a skewer. This is traditionally uh, something that is eaten during the Christmas season, but it is delicious year-round. And every year, the first weekend of December, it's our biggest fundraiser to make these at Scan Fair. Now if you've seen the recipe already online, um, it's going to be a little bit different than the way I'm making it today, but as the chef, you get to decide, and it's a pretty forgiving recipe. I decided to combine all the dry ingredients, including the sugar, um, which in the recipe it separates it. So this is two cups of flour, um, three tablespoons of baking powder, and two teaspoons of cardamom, and one tablespoon of sugar, just regular white sugar. So that's our dry mix. Then we're gonna mix up three eggs, a cup and a quarter of milk, melted butter, third of a cup, and then uh, we're gonna be using a teaspoon of lemon extract, although you can also use lemon zest. Oh, also, uh, the um, maiden voyage of the Danish dough whisk. What are we gonna call it? I think that is what it's called. All right, Danish dough whisk. And I got this for Mother's Day this year, so we're gonna give it a whirl. Um, I'm gonna start with mixing up our eggs. Um, this also, the shell is disintegrating. All right, I uh, took a little break to get a bowl for my eggshells and clean up the eggshell from here. We are now in the clear. There will be no gross eggshells. Right, so we're just gonna crack these into a separate bowl. Yep, all good. And one more for a sniff test. And we're good. So I'm gonna maiden voyage, here we go. Let's see how it works. Now we're going to put in the milk. Now it's been a little bit of time since I, since I melted the butter and so um, normally I would temper it in but I think I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in so hardly warm at all but it is um, melted. I'm just gonna... And we're going to get a teaspoon of lemon extract. You do not want to spill any extra in, or you will have able skewer that smell and taste like pledge. So do be careful with your lemon extract. That's not a forgiving part of the recipe. All right. Now the true test of this um, beautiful new whisk. We're gonna pour all of the wet into the dry. well incorporated and then will come the really exciting part and that is when I am no longer in the frame and you will get to watch the magic of how these beautiful um, able skewer come to be um, cooked and beautifully round which is the real trick this is an amazing whisk I'm sold if you don't have one um, I recommend it it's amazing this is where um, you can add a little bit of more milk if needed, um, but I think this is a little on the thick side, but I think it's going to work out fine. Pour this. Oh, the cardamom and the lemon smell so good. Now that is something that if you don't think you like cardamom, um, or lemon in it. You can always just leave those out and it would be just your basic plain, plain able skewer recipe. So those are optional add-ins, but uh, every year at Scan Fair we have at least a handful of people who after eating them come back around and say that they're the best able skewer they've ever had. So um, also you might notice that if your if a recipe that you use um, incorporates whipping the egg whites and folding them in, although delicious, you'll see, well, you'll see that they turn out great regardless and flavor-wise, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Maybe a little bit texturally, but this is an easy way. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our pan and we're gonna reposition the uh, camera so we can watch. Okay, so we are gonna start by um, squirting, and this is a little bit of um, avocado oil. You can use any kind of um, vegetable oil and uh, or you could melt some butter and do it that way. You do not want to skimp on the oil. So we are just about ready. 
Here's where people uh, can also vary in how they make them. I believe in getting it right up to the top. Uh, you do not want to skimp on the batter, otherwise you will have a hollow able skewer and nobody likes a hollow able skewer. And they look like flying saucers and not round balls. So these are also, uh, like I've said before, very forgiving and so if you have some mess around the outside, you'll see how I tuck it right on in to the middle as we get cooking. And I have a bamboo skewer that I'm going to be using, but you can use a knitting needle, which is very common. So similar to making pancakes, you're going to wait until you see a little bit of bubbling like this around the edge before you start the turning of them. And the really important piece is that you do not do a full turn. It's all in the quarter turn in order to make it a very round ball. So we're going to go ahead and go quarter turn. That's a little light, but it'll darken up. And this is where, if you can see, I'm tucking in any of the apron that's around the outside. So quarter turn, stuff in the apron. Just tuck them in, tuck it in. Let it sit for a moment. It's also nice to have a paper towel handy for wiping the raw batter. Now we're going to do an additional quarter turn to make that beautiful round shape. You're going to be turning these, rotating them several times as you make them. So don't worry, I know I'm getting batter on the outside. No problem. We'll all get cooked. The important part right now is making sure that you're getting that opening all the way down in the bottom so you don't have a Pac-Man uh, able skewer. Oh, I should also say this would be the time if you're going to put a little apple slice in that this would be when you put it in before you do this final turn. Then you just keep rotating them for a while. You'll know when they're done, when your skewer comes out clean, but also they become just a different density. And if you try this at home, you're gonna, you'll, you'll just um, learn that through practice. They feel just kind of a different heaviness when they're done cooking. You definitely want them cooked all the way through. Batter in the middle is not delicious. So you can see that kind of, that's starting to look done, but that's still pretty wet batter in the center. So you just keep, keep checking it and turning it. You also want them to have a nice uh, golden hue on the outside, so and keep them going for that as well. These ones are getting pretty close. Yeah. The weight of that one is, is starting to get pretty close to being done. 
So I think at this point it's just about getting a nice color on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and switch these guys because this one needs just a little bit more. That middle one is just not quite as hot as these other ones. Okay, I'm going to say these guys are done now. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in a bowl. If you were serving these at home, I would probably put them in a pan in a 200 degree oven to keep them warm so that everybody can eat at once. Otherwise it's, yeah, we're good to go. And then you just add more oil. And around we go again. ready to plate. So we are going to take three of these very nice round tables here and put them right here on the plate. And then we're just going to do a little sprinkling of some powdered sugar. Skin fair we use a sifter which makes a nice little sprinkling on top and then I have some nice raspberry jam. Strawberry is also great. Just break mine in half and do a little dab grab into the jam. So good. So good. Thanks for watching today. This has been fun, a uh, learning experience, and I hope you try it at home. Bye!